All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna go back to some basic statics and look at trust analysis using the method of sections. And what I have here is a trust geometry and loading that are given to me. And what I wanna do is find the internal loading in members BC, GB, and CG. Here is what the trust looks like. So I have this trust, it's like a cantilever trust. I have here, here, this three meter spans, if you will, in a six meter height. This geometry has a two to one ratio like this. And the loading of my structure is 40 kilonewtons pointing down point G and 20 kilonewtons here at point E. And what I wanna do is find forces in members BC, BG or GB here and CG. Now, sometimes in problems that you're given, you, they actually, you know, like if you read the problem statement and you think about it, it kind of tells you where you should cut because it, you know, the three members will line up perfectly. So when you're using the method of sections, what you're really trying to do is utilize the three equilibrium equations. So you, what you want to do is make a cut that only has three unknowns, or in this case, with trusses, reveals only three members or three unknowns. Now, in this problem, it wasn't given so obviously. You know, it says here, cut through maybe BC, BG, and then CG. And I can't really make a cut here and, and isolate a section or portion of my truss. And so I have to do this incrementally. So I can't just go through and just straight up cut through it and find out, you know, three unknowns. But it looks like if I cut through right here, I'll get BC, BG, and GH. But what I want to do right now, one of the things I like to do before I go through the analysis is evaluate the determinacy of the truss. And that evaluating determinacy is, is comparing the number of unknowns with the number of equal equations you have available to analyze your trust. And in this case, every member represents an unknown or has unknown internal loading. And because all my structure, my entire structure is connected by pins, I don't have to worry about internal shears or internal moments. All I have to worry about are internal normals. So wherever Ever, I, whenever I cut through a member, I'm only going to reveal an unknown internal normal force. So in this case, my unknowns are going to be the members. So I have, if I cut through here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Plus, I have two reactions here for the pin support and one roller support reaction, so three reactions. So when I isolate or I look at each joint here, because again of the hinges, I don't have, I, I don't really have moment equilibrium available to me. So at each joint, I only have two equilibrium equations. And those two equilibrium equations are the sum of the forces in the horizontal and sum of the forces in the vertical. So that means I would have, let's see, I have, how many joints do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine joints times two equations per joint. And this would tell me 18 equations and I have 18 unknowns. So since my number of unknowns equals my number of equations, this is statically determinate. All right, so now that we determined that the structure is statically determinate, what we have to do is decide if we're gonna use method of joints or method of sections. Now granted, the video heading has method of sections in it, so we're probably gonna use the method of sections, but just take let's take a closer look at the structure real fast. The structure here, we could, in theory, go from joint to joint, starting at E, going to D, and as long as we have, as we go from joint to joint, two equations, two unknowns, we're gonna be in business, and in fact, we can, you know, use equal global equilibrium, calculate support reactions at A and I, and then again, approach joint to joint and get and hopefully get to members B, G, B, C, and whatever else we need to solve for. Now using the method of sections, if we can make a cut, and in this case, we're gonna cut through three members and use the equilibrium equations, then hey, maybe we can get to this identifying those three forces a little bit faster. And for us, our cut is going to be through these members here. So we're gonna make a cut here and we're gonna choose from this cut, just like analyzing a beam, we're gonna choose either the left side or the right side. And in this case, I'm gonna choose the right side because if I chose the left side, I would have to have determined these support reactions at A and I and I didn't do that so really all I have left is the right side of this diagram so I'm gonna go ahead and redraw the free body diagram of my cut right here 
So here's the right side of my cut. Now I'm gonna erase the members who I've cut through here and just replace those with forces, assuming tension in each member. And I know from my ratio, this two to one ratio here, I went through six meters here. So this vertical height between C and G is three meters. And now I can use my equilibrium equations, my three equilibrium equations and solve for NCB, NGB and NGH. So the first thing I'm going to do and what's really useful is to use moments or sum of moments. And in the structure here, I see that both I see two of my forces, NGB and NGH go through point G. So if I sum moments through point G right here, I'm going to be able to get NCB directly. And what's even better is that this 40 kilonewton load also goes through point G. And so I don't even have to worry about that either. So I'm going to apply my first equilibrium equation. And this first one is going to be sum of the moments about G equal to zero. I'm going to go with counterclockwise as positive. And so here I will have starting from this load right here, I'll go negative 20 kilonewtons with an arm of six meters plus NCB times three meters equals zero. And that tells me that NCB is equal to positive 40 kilonewtons, which means 40 kilonewtons in tension. The positive merely indicates that the way that I've drawn it is correct. And so here, this, I've assumed tension in all the members. And so that means NCB is still in tension. All right, next I can apply, I could apply another sum of the moments. I could apply the moments about point B here and then get NGH directly. But here, I'm just going to go ahead and just do some of the forces in the vertical and some of the forces in the horizontal. So in order to do that, I need some information about my geometry. And this, if I draw a dotted line to point B, this dotted line to where, you know, this joint B used to be, this distance was also three meters. And my height is also three meters. So this right here was just one to one. And the hypotenuse of this would be square root of two. All right. So that tells me, let's see. So I, if I'm doing some of the forces in the vertical, NGB times one over the square root of two minus NGH. And for here, for this triangle, one square root one and two, this hypotenuse right here would be square root of five. So NGH times one over the square root of five for the vertical component of NGH minus 40 kilonewtons minus 20 kilonewtons equals to zero. So I have one equation with two unknowns. And then I do some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero. And that'll tell me that negative NGB times one over the square root of two minus NGH times two over the square root of five minus NCB equal to zero. So here are my two equilibrium equations. And I notice that these two terms here are the same except for the negative sign. So if I add the two equations together, I'm going to be able to eliminate this. So if I sum this all up, and I also know that NCB is 40 kilonewtons. So I already know this, I can get one equation, one unknown, if I just add these two equations together. And so I know that here, this term will come out to zero. For here, I'll have negative NGH times three over the square root of five. This negative NCB, this is, I'm gonna substitute 40 kilonewtons in here. So this is gonna be negative four, negative 20, negative 60 plus Ne negative 40 and this term right here will be negative 100 kilonewtons equal to zero and that just tells me here if I plug and chug this would tell me that ng8 is negative 100 times the square root of 5 over 3 kilonewtons. And when I work that out, I would get negative 74.54 kilonewtons which tells me that ngh is in compression and this is 74.54 kilonewtons in compression. In this equation, I know NGH and now all I've got to do is solve and just substitute back NGH and I can solve for NGB. So here, if I just do some more plugging and chugging from this relationship, I would know that NGB is equal to negative NGH times two times the square root of two over square root of five minus 40 kilonewtons 
times the square root of two. And I just got a substitute for this. So I'm gonna put in for NGH a negative 74.54 kilonewtons, which is going to give me a positive result because I have a negative times a negative. That's gonna give me a positive result. That's gonna be 94.28 kilonewtons minus 40 times square root of two kilonewtons, which is equal to a positive 37.7 kilonewtons. And that tells me that NGB, well, 37.7 one, to be precise, kilonewtons in tension. All right, so I know the internal force here so far, I know the internal force in member BC, BG, and GH. The question though asks me, I already have, let's see, I've got BC done, GB done, but I need CG. So I have to, I'm gonna take a look at, at trying to figure out the internal loading in CG. And one of the things I could do is I, I look down here at joint G, I know two of the forces and there's only two other members. So I can use method of joints on joint G and just solve for the unknown CG. So let me go ahead and do that. So my free body diagram of joint G and all the members framing into it would be cut out. And here I would have, let's see if I draw these members, and I feel like the most common mistake here is to forget or, you know, forget, mess up the cosines and the angles and things. So what I like to do is I like to just draw maybe some gray or lighter lines and just remind myself what the geometry was that I was looking at. All right, so, so far so good. And now because I've isolated the joint, I know NGB, I know NGH, I have two unknowns and I got two equilibrium equations. My sum of the forces in the horizontal and sum of the forces in the vertical. So let's go ahead and apply those. So sum of the forces, sum of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero. And using some of the forces in the horizontal is convenient because NGC is all vertical. And so this is gonna leave me with one equation and one unknown. So I'll have a two NGF times two over the square root of five minus NGH times two over the square root of five minus NGB times one over the square root of two, all equal to zero. And now when I plug and chug, I will get an answer for NGF which just means that NGF is 44.72 kilonewtons in compression. And then last but not least, some of the forces in the vertical to get me NGC. And again, I would have, let's see, negative NGH is one over the square root of five, NGB times one over the square root of two plus NGC plus NGF times one over the square root of five minus 40 kilonewtons equals zero. And again, when I plug and chug, and this will tell me that NGC is equal to, it's crazy, zero. Ha, it's a zero force member, who knew? All right, bam, done, all that for nothing. Ah, no, not for nothing, right? But here, interesting approach, interesting problem, NGC equals zero, NGF equals 44.72 kilonewtons in compression. Uh, let's see, did I, oh, I did answer the question and a little bit more, hey. All right, bonus points. So hopefully that was an useful and interesting example for method of sections and trust analysis, some basic trust analysis at least. Structure free.